Hey, Rack and Beer viewers. <clears throat> Welcome to a, a brew day, or the introduction to a brew day. Uh, I decided to, uh, I was going to say good morning, but then I was also going to pick up my beer. Um, I'm recording the intro about halfway through the brew day, so I'm a little, I'm already a bit ahead of the game. But uh, this is going to be a grain to glass video for um, for a what I'm going to call an oat cream IPA with uh, kvik with the uh, the Hornendal strain, which um, I'm going to use that uh, WHC is it WHC I think it was WHC WHC Labs. Um, if I messed it up, I'll correct myself, but, um, that Odin, the Odin strain, uh, I got a little picture of it. I'll hopefully remember to put it right here. Um, from my last homebrew Wednesday, uh, or well, who knows, there might be a few more homebrew Wednesday. Anyway, the, the homebrew Wednesday about the new fake strains that I've, uh, that I bought. Um, I've actually, since their, their website is, um, back up and, uh, well, cheers anyway. Here's, speaking of some Kvik, here's some Kvik Pale Ale. Mm. Um, so this is an oat cream IPA, and I've kind of got the idea from, uh, there's a Danish brewery called, uh, Olden, and they make an oat cream IPA, um, and then they, they put a lot of fruit and stuff in it. I'm going to let the yeast and the hops do the talking on this one, so, but the idea is, is that it's got a lot of oat malt in it, so, um, I'm going to do a, a pretty big split of oat malt uh, and then just some base malt. Uh, and then this is going to get uh, some New World hops. I think I'm going to go with uh, Galaxy for sure. And then I've got a whole bunch of other, uh, I haven't decided on the, um, probably do at least one other hop, maybe two. Thinking about Machueca. Um, but I've got a few to choose from. That'll be, a, that'll be later in the video, I think. Anyway. So, uh, and then it's going to be, uh, it's going to be fermented, uh, as hot as I can get it with that Horndal, um, strain, uh, the Odin strain. So, uh, yeah, let's, uh, yeah, let's get, uh, well, let's go back in time for me, uh, to see some, uh, mash stuff, and then, uh, we'll be, uh, getting the boil on here. I'm just listening for the, for the boil kettle to hit right now, so, uh, yeah, we'll see you later. All right, I got the, um... I got the malts all uh, ground up. Pretty simple recipe, this one. Uh, you can see from the big old husks here, this is uh, oat malt on top that I ground up. Uh, so there's only two grains in this recipe. It is 70% um, Golden Promise Pale Ale Malt and 30% uh, oat malt. So, hoping to get a Hoping to get a real interesting kind of mouthfeel on this uh, out of that, and a, and a very light beer. So I'm about to uh, put this in. I'm doing no sparge uh, today, so I'm just gonna get this into the mash tun and uh, yeah, get the mash going. All right, here's a here's a look at the mash. You can see that doing a doing six kilo six kilograms of uh, of malts in my old uh, mash tun with uh, no sparge just about maxes it out and uh, I mean the, the sparge is pretty thin it's just you know fitting this amount of water and grain in um, I'm a couple of a uh, couple of degrees high on the temperature right now so I'm just uh, being extra thorough looking for dough balls trying to knock a couple degrees off and then I'll uh, I'll be um, yeah closing it up for for the mash rest, rest. Um, I know it may look super. Oh, sorry about the camera work there. Uh, I know it may look. Oh, oh! Did you see that giant dough ball? Oh, you won't escape me. I've been hunting him. He's like my my white whale. Um, yeah, this might look incredibly thin. And oh, there you are. There you are, you you rascal. Look at you. Oh. I stab at the look at that gotcha anyway um, it may look super thin and it well it is super thin uh, and I last time I did this I got real worried that I mean efficiency would tank and everything and and I mean it, it does I'm 
this grain bill would normally be for like a um, would normally be for like a six and a half percent uh, beer for my like for the grain father if I did a real good sparge and got a good efficiency but um, yeah instead I'm I don't really care if I, I'm looking I'm shooting more for 5.5 .5 to 6 percent so efficiency doesn't really matter and this actually worked really well for my uh, for my pale ale to do this uh, full Oh, full uh, volume sparge with uh, no, or no, uh, f full volume mash with no sparging, so. And it cuts uh, cuts uh, about an hour off the brew day, so that's also great for me. Anyway, all right, I'm gonna check the temperature again and get this all closed up. And uh, yeah, be back. All right, running it off into the uh, grandfather for boil. Here's the last four loft I pulled. It's uh, some hazy stuff, but uh, I like the color of it. So, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see. I'll let that all run out, and then I'll mix it up, and I'll uh, I'll check what the pre-boil gravity is. Uh, I'll be interested to see what kind of efficiency I got out of this, and um, yeah, As a, that wasn't very much of an update, was it? Oh well. Yeah, brew day's going real fast and real easy, just like I like them. All right, I just hit uh, we just hit the uh, the boil out there, and I've got a sample. That one's still a little bit warm, uh, but I'm waiting for that to get a hydro sample. But the uh, refractometer says that the pre-boil is sitting at. Uh, 1052, which is actually a couple of points above um, what uh, what I was shooting for. No, I'm sorry, below a couple points. It was 1055 was what we were looking for. But that was that was if I was looking. Beersmith is telling me that I'm gonna get a like a 6.3 percent beer with like a 1064 OG or something. But the the mash efficiency is ridiculous in uh, in the standard brew in a bag um, profile that I'm using for no sparge. So there's no way I got that high efficiency. So I am I'm actually happy with 10.52 um, after boil. I'm guessing we're gonna be 10.55, 10.56 range, which is absolutely dead on where I wanted it. But uh, yeah, we'll see. We just hit boil and uh, yeah. Uh, about to about to throw in the uh, about to throw in the bittering charge. So see ya. And here is our bittering charge of 10 grams of magnum, which will be the only uh, boil hop addition that I'm gonna make. So here we go. Lamb. All right. All right. It's hops time. I just killed the uh, <clears throat> I just killed the boil outside. Recirculating the uh, hot wort through the um, through the chiller, and uh, yeah, deciding on some hops. So I think I <coughs> mm. sorry about that. I'm getting over a, a sickness. Um, I decided to go with Galaxy. So Galaxy, Waiiti, and Machuica. So two New Zealand hops and an Australian hop, uh, and uh, I think I'm going to do a, uh, <coughs> oh, excuse me again, I think I'm going to do like a 30 gram split of each one, uh, maybe, maybe kick a couple in there so I do 100 grams even in the, in the whirlpool. Going to drop the, dropping the temperature down to 80 degrees Celsius, then I'm going to do um, a hop burst uh, whirlpool for a half hour um and then chill uh and pitch uh the east uh and i think i'm not gonna i'm not gonna go too super crazy on the uh on the whirlpool because um it's been my experience uh like it was my experience with the the kvik last time on the voss that i i did a big uh, centennial hop hop burst at the end and by the time that voss had blown through the 
the beer um it had lost most of that i think that the just really vigorous fermentation kind of blew out the the hop aroma so i'm not going to go too crazy i think i'm going to go much crazier on the dry hop um than on the the actual maybe i'll only do 20 of each in fact um so yeah less in the less in the in the whirlpool and more in the dry hop after fermentation i think that's the way to go or at least that's what I'm gonna try. So uh, yeah, be back for that uh, hot drop here in a second. All right, <clears throat> minor supplemental hop update. Cheers, need this. Um, I ended up doing, uh, yeah, 30 grams of uh, Waidi and 30 grams of Galaxy, and then uh, about 40 grams of Machueca. Uh, and, uh, while I was weighing it out, I had turned the, uh, the chiller on, uh, to get down to 80, because I was at 92, and, uh, I forget that in Denmark, uh, the groundwater usually doesn't really heat up that much, uh, during the summer, so I'm actually down to 70 now. I threw the hops in, I'm gonna give it the whirlpool, I'm not gonna turn the elements back on. So we might get a, a little less, a uh, little less uh, whirlpool, a little less uh, hop burst action out of that. But I don't know. I'm glad I didn't throw any more hops into this. So I'm I'm planning on at least a single dry hop, if not a double. So whatever, it's fine. So 30 minutes, and then I'm gonna start chilling it down. Gonna wrap this brew day up. Just pitch the uh, the Odin strain or the uh what i'm well what i know now is horndal quick i've got uh, i made a starter i know you don't need to especially if they want to under pitch the quick but uh i wanted to pull off a little to save for myself so that's uh that's in here half this little over half the starter is gonna chill out in there for to fight another day but um, <clears throat> yeah, so I pitched a starter and we'll, I'll keep an eye on it. I already got it up to 28 degrees in the firm chamber. I'm hoping to get it up over 30 Celsius. That's where I wanna, once active fermentation takes off, I think I'll easily be able to keep it above 30. That's my goal. Um, yeah, I mean, it was a relatively uneventful brew day. Uh, other than the fact that I cannot get a gravity measurement to... I think that both my hydrometer and my refractometer are completely screwed. I am just going to go and online and, and spend a fortune and get a, a friggin' digital one. Because I've gone through... I don't even know how many hydrometers. This one is almost brand new. It reads... It reads different every single time. The refractometer is reading, it's lower now somehow post-boil than it was, than it read pre-boil. Uh, and I did, I adjusted for the temperature and everything. I, I cooled the sample, so I, I do not know what is wrong. These, this is a cheap piece of crap. I mean, I know that, why that one might be junk, but I don't know. This hydrometer has never, I've tested it with uh, distilled water. It doesn't read right. I'm really tired of buying them, so uh, I'm not gonna make this into a hydrometer rant video. But anyway, as far as I can tell, the final gravity ended up at about 1050, maybe 1052. This one's reading about 1048, the hydro I'm pointing to the hydrometer. Um, this one's reading 1048, even corrected, but I, and this one is reading 1052, so I'm just gonna split the difference and say it's an even 1050. Fine by me. Uh, I wanted, I wanted a five, just north of 5% beer anyway. I like, that's how I like my beers nowadays. Couldn't care less. Um, that's, I'm getting to the point where I'm just going to stop measuring. Uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's take a quick taste before I flip this. Uh, and then, uh, next time you see me, it'll probably be the review of the finished beer, hopefully, anyway. But let's see how it tastes before it's finished. Smooth. 
Mmm. Oh, a lot of tropical fruit, even through the malty sweetness of unfermented wort. I'm already getting kind of a tropical, and it's um, it's a different kind of sweetness. Maybe that's from that oats. So, oh, it tastes nice. Already tastes nice. So we'll see. And that color, I really like the color of it. I hope that that color comes out in the end. Um, all right. Hopefully see you on the tasting. Cheers. Stupid hydrometer. All right. So this is the... Uh... This is the Hornendal IPA. I was just gonna take a peek inside under the lid here. Look at that. Croizen has already totally fallen on that sucker. Oh, it's a good, it's a good smell. I'm gonna pull a quick sample of that and uh, let's get this underway. All right. Now it's time for the uh, part of the video with the uh, with the old taste test. And, uh, yeah, here it is. That is, uh, I believe... Let me wipe off some condensation here so you can see it clearly. I believe that that is what the kids call Hayes Nation. That is a, that is a righteously uh, milky looking beer. Um, Dry hopped it, I uh, can't remember if I put any footage in about the dry hopping, but I dry hopped it with um, about 130 grams of uh, hops mixed between uh, Galaxy, Machueca, and uh, Waiiti. And uh, yeah, this is the result. Uh, this is about the mm, third, mm, f no, probably around the fourth pint pulled out of the keg. Um, probably about the first one was uh, was pretty much just hop gunk and, and yeast and stuff from the bottom of the keg. Uh, and then I, I sipped on a few little little taster glasses and this is uh, this is the second pint I've pulled today. So you can see that it's it's super super hazy. Um, I've had uh, beers with the oat malt before and I've this is uh, pretty similar to what I've seen from other like oat malt beers, so I think the I think the oat cream uh, the cream IPA part is is definitely it looks pretty creamy. It's got a it pours with a really nice uh, really nice head. Uh, yeah, it's about all I can say about the. Oh, sorry, there's a little bug in there. Uh, it's about all I can say about the appearance. Um, I'm pretty satisfied with it. This is what I was going for. Uh, I also don't think that that Hornendal is a real high flock, flocker, flocculator. Uh, so that, that probably also is in there too. But uh, yeah, appearance-wise, that's, uh, that's it. Um, it's filthy looking, but it's, uh, for me it looks really good. Now, the, now for the nose. It's got a, it's got a really... Um, it's got a very distinct nose. Lots of tropical fruits. Um, and actually, uh, actually a little bit of, uh, a little bit of that like piney spice um, that you get, uh, that you get kind of from, uh, what's it, um, Columbus. Not like, like, like this would be like, um, I would say there's about like one percent of that in there, and then there's just a little bit of tropical fruit and uh yeah, just that general uh not not a little bit of tropical fruit. why did I say that it's a uh, it's there's a good deal of tropical fruit in there, but um I would say it's a uh, it's a balanced nose i would i would, I thought that there was gonna be a bigger nose on it um Maybe it's just this glass. I'm I'm pouring it in this big old pint glass. Maybe uh, maybe if I had a more a glass that concentrated the nose a bit more, um, I'd get a bit more out of it. I probably should have chosen another glass for this video. Oh, do I have another one behind me? No, not really. But anyway, there's it's uh, it smells nice and tropical. It smells like a super dry hopped beer. Let's uh, let's taste it up. Hmm. The taste is really nice. Um, very smooth bitterness. Uh, 
it comes, uh, there's no upfront bitterness. It kind of more comes uh, near the end. And actually, I think because it's so fresh, it's actually a bit amplified by just, um, just how fresh it is with such a big dry hop. Um, I think it'll actually probably get even smoother once it, uh, once it settles in a bit, once it ages. It's about, uh, it's been in the keg a little over, oh, how long has it been in the keg? It's been in there a little over a week, uh, week and a, yeah, a little, like, let's say nine days it's been in the keg, um, and, uh, so it's, it's still pretty young. Maybe it'll, maybe it'll change up a little bit. I know a lot of people, some people like this kind of beer dead fresh, which is kind of me. And some people say that it really like peaks around, you know, between two, two to three weeks. I don't know. I'm, I'm really enjoying it right now. The mouthfeel is super smooth. It's just like velvet. Um, it's got a, it's, it's, it's a dry beer. Uh, it finished, uh, it finished under 1010, so it's uh, it's pretty dry, but it's it's got a pretty nice slick mouthfeel. It's really easy drinking. I'm really I'm really digging the what the um, what the Golden Promise and the uh, and the uh, oat malt brought to this, and I'm really digging the Horndal. Um, I think that I could have turned this if I had if I had had more time. Like if my schedule had lined up right for time-wise, I really think I probably could have turned this beer around. Jeez, I could have turned this beer around in in probably I could have had it in the keg in in five days. I probably could have been drinking it within a week because it was it was done fermenting and um, I got the fermenter up to uh, 33 degrees Celsius, which is what around 100 degrees. Is that right? So it's it's in the 90s. I know. I'm pretty sure it's in the 90s. Might be. Might be. Uh, might be high 90s. Uh, I, of course, I didn't do any conversions or anything. But I, I got it. It's the hottest I've ever gotten the the firm fridge up to, and that was because we were having a heat wave here in Denmark, and I had my heater pad in there running full bore, and I just set the ink bird for an unreachable temperature, so I knew that the heater would just always be running. And uh, yeah, it it, uh, it topped out. I think it, to it topped out over 34 degrees for a little while, and then it, I think it settled in to about 33 and a half, between 33 and 33 and a half for, for the um, last bit of fermentation. But that that first, uh, it really it like filled this whole brew house with, um, with just the smell of like uh, melon and citrus fermentation. So. Was awesome, and uh, I was probably I hid all of the a lot of the quick like uh, distinct Horndal uh, flavors with all the with all the hops, but I like to think that it's um, I like to think that it's backing the hops up in a cool way. Yeah, I mean it is still a super young beer, so maybe some more yeast character will come out, but I. I still think that the, it's probably playing really well with these hops, and I'm glad that I I'm glad that I went with a hoppy beer and did the Horndal. I would like to I'd like to try it with a bit more like distinct in the yeast profile, especially getting it that high. But uh, for now, I'm I'm pretty happy with the results of this thing, and um, yeah, it's a it's a it's a cool yeast. Uh, I know everybody's doing the the no boils, and I mean this looks like a no boil. Oh God, you just saw that it's a Carlsberg. I'm sorry, been trying to been trying to hide that from you. I uh, now you know that I drink a <laughs> Carlsberg pint glass. Sorry about that. No, um, yeah, back to the beer. I'm I'm really satisfied with it. Uh, it's really easy. You can see I've already gone through a half pint just in the in the few minutes uh even with all the talking i'm doing so it's uh it's really killing it on these summer days i'm i'm looking forward to having this one on tap and i i saved uh i saved some of the Hornendal, so i want to do another beer with it and yeah i'm i'm actually thinking of uh, making another pale ale 
maybe uh yeah with it or something something else and i've got still got two two more of those uh those yeasts that i'm waiting to do but um all right so to wrap things up um i i'm really impressed with the uh with the odin strain from uh from this whc labs uh it's uh it took off uh, I made a starter, but I'm I'm guessing that uh, it didn't need it at all. So that little that little vial probably would have uh, probably would have taken off in my beer. I just I literally made the starter just so I could uh, just so I could save off some for another batch, and um, it fermented like crazy. Uh, I mean, I got it up to as hot as I physically could, and it it fermented awesome. I would, I would, uh, I would like to try maybe a little like uh, maybe a cooler ferment, but I, I think it did great things too. I mean, I've I've had this kind of combination of hops before, and I've never had this kind of um, juicy kind of. There is something in the background that's just like juicier than I would even even expect um, Galaxy to be. But, uh, so I think that that's the the horn doll but um, I mean even though even though maybe it's uh, it's not as contributing to the like some of the hops take away a little bit from the yeast flavor it was still an amazing fermenter um, it's uh, it did even better than the Voss uh, Voss fake which was the the one that I've been using for a couple batches like the, this one this one actually did uh, fermented even better. It didn't flocculate as much, which I mean, depending on what kind of style you're going for, maybe that's something. Uh, um, I also didn't do an extended cold crash, so I could also be something in there. I only did like one day cold crash, so maybe maybe a few more days would have made the difference. But in my opinion, it doesn't seem to flocculate as much as the Voss. But uh, it, it was a good. Um, I'll, I'd, I'd buy it again. I mean, I don't have to buy it again because I saved some, and I mean, maybe I'll try and dry it out, and then I'll have it for like, um, you know, my grandkids will be using it. But uh, I can definitely recommend it, uh, and definitely recommend like it for hoppy styles. But uh, it would also be really, really cool to try um, to try it out in in something a little more yeast forward, like blonde ale, uh, where you could actually get some of the yeast character. Maybe, uh, I, I'm really, I think I'm probably going to do like a, a more mildly hopped pale ale with it. And I think that would be kind of neat. But, uh, yeah, until that, uh, thanks for watching this Grain to Glass on this, uh, still as yet unnamed, uh, beer. But, uh, it is a oat cream tropical IPA, I guess you could call it. Fake IPA. Sorry, that was a bug too. And, uh, yeah. So cheers, check out, um, yeah, check out some of the other videos and, uh, yeah, subscribe or whatever's if you, if you want and, uh, cheers.